So I thought I'd talk about tools for a second. Um, I just got the seats out here. I'm going to clean this wall up good. It's kind of dusty and dirty back there. And uh, taking the speakers down and fixing under there. Fixing the speaker mounts. The upholstery's coming off of them. But I'm um, just really glad to have this floor out finally. Back to tools. There's a couple things that are really handy, especially for taking apart interior, where the screws, they can be a little bit corroded and stuck. So the first thing you're gonna want is, a, I mean, a quality screwdriver, but this, um, it's a little 3 8 hex right here, and this is a 3 8 ratchet wrench, so that's gonna allow you to put your full weight down against the screw and still turn it very easily. It's surprising how little force it takes to turn a screw once you have a wrench on there. So you really have to be careful, but you don't want to round out screws, especially in the interior, because there's really no way to to grind one off when it's stuck right in the upholstery. So always, I mean, crown, always do crown if you can. But then when you're trying to take the screw out this, so you can put your full weight into the screw and a ratcheting wrench is the best way to go. A great way to get them started is one of these little impact driver thingies. Now you're gonna have to be careful that you have it turned the right way so it'll be loosening and not tightening. And uh, you have to keep turning it as you go. You can't just keep on hitting it or else it'll switch directions on you because this will turn or this will turn and this won't. And then it'll tighten the screw again for you. So always be careful when you're doing uh, handling these things there. They're meant to pound on, but they, they can break and you have to be careful you're, that you use them right. But this will get a stuck screw out pretty much no matter what. And then this little air ratchet. Um, for getting the seats out it's kind of a tight spot to get in here under the seat and uh you'd hardly get a swing at all with a ratchet but this thing obviously you don't have to worry about swinging there's not very much height on it compared to an impact so it's like perfect for this type of work just a nice little air ratchet like that and use tin steps for cutting the carpet out that worked great um and if you're wondering what this is I'm not sure if I had mentioned that I had snapped the stud off of one of the shock mounts on the back, so um, a machine shop cut the stud out, which is plug welded here, but this stud slides into the cast, and then it has this diameter for the shock, and then it's cut down to threads. It's kind of a very um, special piece, and at Peterbilt, they said uh, they don't have any anymore, but the last price they had for them was $4,000, so... Yeah, they gotta be careful what you break on an old truck. All right, so here is before that the seat and the floor is ripped out, kind of dirty. So I cleaned all this up, and then we'll compare an app. All right, so I've noticed this corner behind the upholstery and along here was really bad for mice. But uh, I have to pull this panel back anyway because out here, um, the cab's kind of broke. Or this uh, stack, it probably got caught at one point and it's ripped away from the cab about half an inch or so. So in order to fix that, I'm gonna have to pull that down um, so when I do that I can clean this whole pillar out and uh, that'll get rid of even more of the smell so as far as that old uh, this spot and the roof or the ceiling and the bunk were the only places that had mice so I'll end up tearing both those places apart anyway to take the whale's tail off and to fix the muffler so that'll be fine so I got this uh, just the back wall there washed. I thought I would mention what I've been using to clean, which uh, is this stuff. Now, if you look at this back wall compared to, that's well, kind of hard to see. 
in the dark but that's I didn't use any on that and then this stuff I did um, in the video they both look fairly shiny but there's a huge difference between how this bottom bit looks and how the top looks um, I used this on our cab over and it made it go, look from or go from looking like an old truck to showroom shape and it stays for a long time I really like this stuff but it's on uh, the renegade products they have a lot of cleaning stuff i haven't really used many of them but i've used oh probably 10 of these bottles now the rub rebel rubber stuff all right so it's been a little while um i do some videos about getting to where i am now but i'm just gonna put this in the start so i've been working away i got the floor out here and what I have is, uh, um, the original floor was this rubber floor. And basically it's two layers of rubber with an underlay sandwiched between uh, the two layers and kind of put in as one unit. But um, over time it's gotten, uh, it's not brittle, it just tears very easily. Like it's really soft. So it was pretty... Um, uh, gross and water was getting into it so um, it was a pretty easy decision just to get rid of the whole mess and it kind of stank so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this on top of my carpet that I'm going to put in it which is this brown house carpet that I bought um, Peterbilt wants 900 bucks Canadian for um, an OEM mat and Aftermarket guys are 400 bucks, so this costs about $40 to try house carpet. So it's worth a shot, see how it goes. It doesn't quite color match, but I actually think I can dye it pretty easily um, with it being a lighter color of the same, like it's a tan, so I'm sure getting a brown dye in there would be pretty easy. So just for an experiment, see how it works. The texture is close to how it should be, not quite. But this might be a bit easier to keep clean, I don't know. So, um, If you're wondering what color carpet your 359 is supposed to be, it's whatever carpet's on the bottom end of the doors. So Sometimes they mismatch, like mine's brown and brown. Some are brown and black with black. The black carpet on the door means it had the black floor carpet, but mine is brown. So, um, the thing I noticed is he had these holes between the seats which I'm pretty sure is where he had wet line boxes because it does have a PDO, so I'm assuming there was a wet line on it. So I'm thinking, I'm sure people would know better than me um, yeah, whether or not this looks like the kind of holes you'd put in the floor for a wet line or what in the world was in there. But that's my guess at the moment. So, um... Yeah, I was kind of surprising those holes go right through the uh, right through the floor to the frame. So we'll see. But I don't know. It's kind of kind of a cool old mat. Like I almost wish it would be in it. Like it still has a Peterbilt logo there. Like it would be nice to have one. But um, I saw someone making replicas of them. But I really don't see the point. I I much prefer carpet as it is even though this would be a lot easier to keep clean so i know it d doesn't look as cozy as a carpet floor so yeah i'll get on with cutting this out oh if you're wondering how much carpet you need to make a floor if you have uh five and a half by four and a half feet that's what this is it's five and a half wide four and a half deep and that should be oh uh, an inch or two bigger than you need, but for to be on the safe side, four and a half by five and a half will work pretty good. So, yeah. Um, there's a seam running down the middle here where you would put uh, the stainless strip. So maybe if you had scraps lying around, you could just do a two piece, and then if you didn't have something that was four and a half feet wide, but was had something that was, you know. 11 feet long in this depth um, or rather in the depth of there that's longer but that would work too but it'd be better off doing it as 
one piece. And um, also what's nice about having this rubber is it gives me a great blueprint to cut in the carpet so I can make sure I get everything exactly the right spot. And I'm gonna leave a wee bit extra on the top there to trim, but I can tuck it in around the firewall. So I'm pretty sure this is gonna work out pretty good. So I'll check in and see how it works in a little bit. So here's what I made. I'm gonna fit it in the truck before I do anything too crazy with cutting in it. But just cut the sticks out and made the notch for the steering wheel and then to fit around the pedals I'm gonna have to figure out how I want to do that and I have to dye it yet so yep yeah, I'm just gonna see if it fits in the truck and uh, go from there um, what I've been using to cut this and it works really good is just a pair of tin snips um, just cut through it like butter it's really good um, yeah, then just to get those holes started, just to pinch it with the, with the ends of those snips, it works really good. So I would definitely say that's my go-to tool for cutting the carpet.